So in general, if a word ends with ology, O-L-O-G-Y, it means the study of something. And meteorology is the study of the atmosphere. And the Earth's atmosphere is that it's relatively thin and relatively tenuous, meaning, I don't know. It, Mars, for instance, has lost, generally speaking. We think that Mars used to have a lot thicker atmosphere than it does now. But the Earth has um, gases and suspended solids and suspended liquids that are gravitationally, gravity is keeping them part of the kind of Earth system, Earth, the, what we call the geosphere and the atmosphere system. Well, I want to differentiate between weather and climate because weather and climate um, both have to do with the Earth's atmosphere, what's going on in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, the big difference is that weather is the day-to-day -day conditions of the atmosphere, and climate is generally long-term. I've heard the, 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 year, um, the number of years about 30 years, so you take about 30 years of atmospheric data for a general region for a general time of year, and that's the climate for that general region for that time of year. Does that make sense? So it's about a 30-year average. And so when um, we have to be a little bit careful when we say that we have an unseasonably warm summer, okay? And so in order to kind of, to me, mathematically look at the climate change, you have to kind of take that seasonably hot summer and average it in the last 29 summers, basically. And then you kind of do have a new climate. Does that make sense? Um, but it's not bumped up as significantly as we, as we generally think of it. So um, th both weather and climate have to do the, with conditions of the Earth's atmosphere, but one is kind of day-to-day or short-term in the past, short-term in the future, and the other is long-term, climate is long-term. So when we look at kind of the variables in the Earth's atmosphere that make a difference to weather or climate, okay, of course, temperature is important. What is the temperature of those gases? and those suspended solids and liquids, the Earth's atmosphere, what is the humidity? And we're going to talk about humidity later, but I bet you already kind of know that humidity is in general how much water, water vapor there is in the atmosphere. That's humidity, different ways to describe humidity. Um, cloud cover in general, um, is it, and we're going to see that there are some locations on Earth that um, like it never rains in Southern California. Okay, but there are some places that tend to get more cloud cover than others. Uh, clim climate speaking, let alone day to day. Um, here, we have clouds and we have no clouds. So weather, it can vary a lot. Um, precipitation, obviously, um, is important. Uh, precipitation is part of what we're going to call the water cycle or the hydrological cycle, where uh, precipitation is water falling from the atmosphere to the Earth's surface. And then, of course, we have evaporation, and then we can have cloud formation and then more precipitation. So that's all um, important as to what's going on in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, atmospheric pressure and atmospheric tendency. Now if you're doing your, uh, if you've chosen to do the project, the three-week project where you're recording um, pressure, um, then you're gathering this every day, Monday through Friday, and writing it down. But atmospheric pressure, we'll talk more about it, but basically what it is, is the gas particles here, where you're measuring atmospheric pressure, it's, it's how much those gas particles are banging on you. Basically, that's atmospheric pressure. Tendency is, generally speaking, if you've ever heard the weather, the folks, the meteorologists say, well, the barometric pressure is rising. That's the tendency. The tendency is rising in that case. Or they'll say the barometric pressure is falling. Or they'll say the barometric pressure is steady. Those are the, those are the three choices with regard to tendency. And I'll just go ahead and we'll talk more about why this is. But in general, if the barometric pressure is falling, that means, well, that means that the gas particles outside or wherever it's being measured, if the pressure is falling, getting less, that means they're banging at you less. But honestly, falling atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure and barometric pressure are the same thing. Falling pressure means that you're probably going to maybe have some sort of um, precipitation event coming up. So atmospheric pressure and tendency is an important aspect of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, is the wind blowing? And if it is blowing, how fast is it blowing?
and from what direction is it blowing. Okay, so wind is a neat thing to study. Wind basically is the relocation of air. Makes sense, right? And so obviously that's important. Um, it's important. Um, it's an important current parameter, current condition of the atmosphere, and wind is actually a, a player in weather systems. So we'll take a look at a typical uh, surface map. Um, and actually this would be called, I guess, a mixed surface map. Mixed surface maps include um, an assortment of things. In this one you can probably see the different colors and the different colors are representing different temperatures. So we have the coldest temperatures here in the dark purple, getting warmer here in the light purple, getting warmer here in kind of the darker blue, getting warmer here in the lighter blue, and then green, and then kind of a greenish tan, and then a tan, and then a yellow. Okay, so um, this is telling us temperature, right? Um, here it's showing us that I assume these are snowflakes. This looks like um, maybe some sort of sleet here. Um, we have some sort of precipitation here. I'm not sure, I'm not real familiar with what this is trying to say. Maybe this is um, these little jag things over here showing us lightning. Okay. Um, one of the things we'll be talking more about this, see if I can pull up my pointer here. Not bad. Okay. So um, this See, is it going to mark for me? Yeah. This that I'm circling, hopefully, if you're colorblind, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, anything with triangles like that, can you see these little triangles, is blue. So this is a line with blue triangles, meaning that it's a cold front. Okay, and we'll talk more about this um, later, but what it means is that cold air is, is on the move. And you see that these triangles are on Let's see, where's my pointer? These triangles are on a specific side of that blue line. Where's my little thing? There it is. Okay, see how these triangles look like they're kind of pointing this way? Honestly, that's on purpose because the cold air, it's a cold front, remember, the cold air, yeah, I need to get my little pencil thing out because that looks pretty bad, but cold air is marching that way. Then the red line, I bet if I were to ask you up here, you guys would probably tell me that that looks like that red line with not triangles but semicircles looks like a warm front, and you are right. And again, can you see the boy? The semicircles are on that side of the red line, so that is the direction, since it's a warm front, that is the direction that warm air is going. All right? Here's one for you. Oftentimes, you'll look at a surface map like this, basically what are the atmospheric conditions right at the Earth's surface. And you'll see an H here, and you might even say, well, I know that means a high pressure. And I go back to that, that pressure, atmospheric pressure, is basically a measure of how much those air, those molecules of air, the gas in our air is beating against you. So it's relatively high pressure there. Okay, uh, find a low up here. Low pressures are kind of fun. If you're into kind of severe weather, your low pressures are probably kind of usually um, in the middle of severe weather. But low pressures are good at being kind of um, like a big old blender where it kind of goes. Okay, and actually we know here in the northern hemisphere that cold air will come down from our north and warm air will come up from our south. So um, I mentioned a big blender. These lows tend to be, and they go counterclockwise if you're looking down at the low. Okay, so they kind of are a nice little blender thing. Okay, <laughs> here's a different day, a different kind of type of weather map. And honestly, this is probably, aside from the colors, this is probably the type of weather map that I'm used to looking at. Now, instead of temperatures, we do see kind of some, um, we see some kind of lines that were kind of like our temperatures, but these are not showing um, where we have the same temperatures. These are showing where we have the same pressures. Okay, and we'll be talking more about this. These are where this, we have the same atmospheric pressures. And I'll just kind of draw your attention 
it's really small so I don't know you're probably going to have to um, look at it a different weather map you can see better but like I have little numbers up here like this is 1004 this is 1000 and this is 996 so those are marking those three lines of same barometric pressure the units of pressure there are in millibars millibars yeah um, here we have our uh, red line um, this is our cold front excuse me warm front our red line with semicircles there's our warm front being dragged up by a low and here's our uh, cold front being dragged down by our low okay it's very characteristic that oftentimes what ends up being really severe weather starts as kind of this warm warm front being dragged up and a cold front being dragged down and then they up here we have something a little bit new um, over Canada we have kind of an alternating um, it looks like it's it's a little confused okay right here we have an alternating um, red semicircle, blue triangle, red semicircle, blue triangle, and if you look close, they're on either side of the line. What that's showing us is a stationary front, where we have cold air on the north and we have warm air on the south. Stationary means that it, neither one is winning out, neither side is, is budging. So, um, just to kind of mention, oftentimes then, um, on a weather, a surface map like this, um, a meteorologist will use this thing called a station model where, and you, I don't know how well you can see them, let's just take, um, I'm awful with my states, Texas. Let's look down here at Texas. Okay, can you kind of see that symbol down there at Texas where it has a 45 and a 30? Well, that's for that particular location. Right here is one blown up, a station model. So for one particular location, one little icon, you can get a lot of information. Uh, for instance, you can get wind speed and wind direction, um, what is the pressure tendency rising or falling, and how quickly is it rising or falling. You can get understanding for cloud cover. You can get current temperature. You can get dew point temperature. Now, we'll be talking more about dew point temperature. And if you're doing your three-week weather log, that's one of the things that you're recording Monday through Friday. But the dew point temperature is how much would you need to cool the current temperature down to in order for um, water gas, water vapor, to go ahead and condense. So that's important because when, when water condenses, then that's when you can get cloud formation. What is a cloud? And we'll be talking more about this too. But what is a cloud? A cloud is particles of liquid water. Okay. Um, so you get water to go from being a gas to liquefying, and you got yourself a cloud, a nice milky cloud. Um, all right. So I think we kind of explained all that.